This story begins about two months ago. I was desperate. I needed to play a game that's name literally translated to inferior clone. But alas, no such game existed. In the meantime, I was forced to play soulless garbage. Crappy games with conventional names, that's what I used to call them. But then, as though through a miracle, a man named Paris Stalker burst through the clouds like a hole in the ozone layer and bestowed upon me the legendary indie title, Ursats. Okay, seriously, I was contacted on Twitter a while back and given a free copy of this game by the creator himself. And while I'm incredibly flattered that you want me to talk about your game, Paris, I don't just review any old thing. Something has to really leave an impact on me for me to make a video about it. So, come on, Ursats. Show me what you got, you schlub. I guess I'm doing this now. Hey there, and welcome to The Hidden Chest, where I talk about overlooked, underrated, or underappreciated games you might not have tried. And Ursats is a self-described hardcore action platformer with a heavy focus on music and speed. You've got the usual fare, running, jumping, sliding, and diving, but most importantly, and uniquely, you've got three dashes that you need to manage. They regenerate over time, or when entering a new screen, but defeating enemies also grants you a charge. Now this all may seem simple, and it is. But who boy is it satisfying. The whole game plays like a dream, with the small caveat that you absolutely need to use a controller. Keyboard and mouse do not do the game justice. Control-wise, and also for a reason I'll get into in a little bit. In the meantime, let's talk aesthetics. Ursats has a great pixelated art style, and I know that a lot of people think that that kind of thing is overdone, but not every developer can afford to make Skullgirls level visuals, geez. Besides, it's what you do with it that matters, and this game really pulls off its art style. It's very simplistic and minimal, but also just a treat to look at. Everything runs smoothly, and it's easy to keep track of your dude slash dudette, even with all the high octane action and particle effects and junk. There are a couple of really minor exceptions, but overall it's stylish and functional. I especially love how each level has different color theming. The last level in particular, which I won't spoil, is like an LSD-fueled Pink Floyd rave. And I kinda like it. But looks aren't the only thing this game has going for it artistically, because Ursatz's sound design might just be the best thing about it. You see, while this isn't necessarily a rhythm game, it certainly has elements of one. Each level and most of the obstacles therein perfectly sync up with the constantly shifting and evolving dynamic techno soundtrack. And mixing the flow of the song up with the game's punchy musical sound effects can make simply going through each level immensely gratifying. Also, remember how I said there's another reason why you should use a controller? Well, this game has full rumble support. Your controller vibrates to the beat of the song, and good god, it's just so perfect. The levels themselves aren't too shabby either. They're all super polished, each one has its own visual theme, enemies, obstacles, and every individual level has two fully fledged bosses. Each level is of a decent length, and they get bigger and bigger as they go on, with a later level taking almost 15 minutes. And while they never get stale because of all the new remixes, mechanics, etc., these huge levels can kinda come into conflict with the game's speedrunning focus. Actually, let's get into that first. This game is all about speedrunning. Each level begins with a countdown, and you can see your rank status at all times in the top right corner. High scores and best times are featured prominently and can even unlock things. Plus, leaderboards exist. It even feeds into the mechanics. Each level
level is designed to be replayed over and over to find the optimal play strategy, with shortcuts and cool tricks that can be pulled off everywhere. And if you mess up on any of said tricks, in order to restore your health you lost, you need to slam these healing pads scattered around each level, but for each point healed it adds 2 seconds onto your time. Even then, you should still use them liberally because dying adds 20 seconds to your time, which can completely destroy your chances of getting the rank you want. And trust me, that'll be a common thing. This game isn't like Sonic, where each level is pretty short and they hand out S ranks like candy on Halloween. This game will bend you over and keep bending until your spine breaks in half. S ranks are extremely difficult to pull off, to the point where dying even once can ruin the whole thing. And to be honest, I don't think it really gels well with the fact that the levels in this game are incredibly long and incredibly difficult. I tell ya, nothing is more frustrating than pulling off a really good run, only to get your sphincter caved in by an insanely strong boss they put in after a 15 minute long gauntlet from hell. Of course, some people might be into that kind of thing, it makes getting S ranks that much more satisfying. But the difficulty threshold is really high, and potentially really frustrating. No, I missed. Maybe splitting each level into two smaller zones with the same theming would have alleviated that a bit. I mean, each level already has two bosses and a bunch of mechanics you could spread between them, and you could even give an option to play them both in a row to get the best of both worlds. But eh, I'm just spitballing here. The game is listed as a hardcore platformer, so whatever bimulations your simulations, Meanwhile, there is one last potential problem I need to talk about. The length. Like I said before, each of the game's levels are really long and refined to boot, but there are only eight of them. The game's real longevity comes from replaying and mastering the levels to get better ranks, and all the optional gameplay styles you unlock after a certain point. But for some people that might not justify the $7 price tag, I think it's justified due to how amazing the game looks and feels, the polish, and the fact that it was made in its entirety by just one guy. But I don't speak for everyone, so let's go over all the bonus stuff this game gives you to do, shall we? Maybe it'll make up for it. Once you beat all the levels for the first time, otherwise known as Type Alpha, you unlock the ability to play them all again in Type Beta, complete with its own ranks and leaderboards. In this mode, you get one really long dash that can also move vertically, instead of three straightforward small dashes. It's a bit tricky though, because running out of dash here makes you a sitting duck until the bar completely refills so you gotta make sure you don't go too crazy. After beating all of those levels, you unlock Type Gamma, but I wanna keep some things a surprise, so I'll just leave it at that. Meanwhile, you can fight bosses individually or in a boss rush mode. There's a journey mode where you go through the entire game non-stop for a single rank, and if you get S ranks on every level in a single mode, you unlock a super secret bonus mode. But I'm not a god, so... Eh. Oh, and all those modes have leaderboards, of course. Meanwhile, this game might not have much of a story, but if you want some hints as to what you're doing, you can collect hidden encryption keys in every level to get bits and pieces of what's actually going on. I must be dumb though because I got them all and I still can't figure it out. If all this still doesn't justify the price to you, then I still highly recommend you get this game, just wait for a sale or something. This guy could really use the support. Ursatz, as of the making of this video, has sold only 2,000 copies, and most all of the sales are from some bundle from a while back. Apparently, only about 75 people have actually played the game. Yes, really. I know the game is pretty niche, but that's just absurd. This is what happens when Steam floods its marketplace with an endless supply of shovelware. Gems like this with no marketing budget just drown in it. I honestly never would have even gotten the opportunity to hear about this game if the developer hadn't flat out contacted me and gave me a copy. So I guess out of every game I've ever reviewed on this channel, and probably every game I ever will review, this has got to be the most overlooked, underrated, and underappreciated appreciated of them all. So all I'm saying is, give this game a chance, you won't regret it. Also, my name is EvanPick64 on the leaderboards, see if you can beat my crappy times.